Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jack here from Jacktastic PCs, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Windows Server 2012 operating system. I'm going to be doing this inside of a VM, but if you were to install this on an actual machine, you'd be doing it the exact same way. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and connect to and start up this virtual machine. Before I do that, I'm actually going to give it some more cores. So this is getting eight virtual cores to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and just start it. And I've already uh, put in the installation media, which is the Windows Server 2012 ISO. Uh, you could mount that to a USB or to a disk and then install that to your computer. So now that this setup has popped up, uh, you can go ahead and select your language to install in, uh, the time and currency, and your keyboard, uh, keyboard or input method, uh, and then just hit next. And install now. And then it's going to take a second for the setup to start screen to go through. And once we're past that, we can actually start installing. So the most important thing for pretty much everyone who is unfamiliar with Windows Server 2012 to do is make sure to select the one with the GUI. Otherwise, you're going to end up being completely annoyed the entire time. For our uses in this tutorial series, we're going to go ahead and pick Windows Server 2012 Standard with a GUI. So just hit Next, uh, and then accept the terms, and Next again. Then always make sure you do this. Select a custom install, and then select whatever disk you want to install to. That way, you're not having it installed to a disk that you're unintendedly uh, installing to, you're always installing to the disk you want it to. This will only take a minute since the ISO and the virtual machine are on an SSD. So once the install is all done, I'll be back with you guys. Alright, and so it's almost done. After this, uh, it pretty much just skips over installing features and installing updates. Then it hops to finishing up. Uh, then it's going to restart, and at that point you can remove your installation media. So, in a second, we'll do that. Now it's on to installing updates. This will take a few seconds and then it will go on to finishing up. And now we can go ahead and just hit restart now or wait for the timer. I'm just going to hit restart now and then I'm going to go ahead and actually eject the Windows um, Server 2012 installation media. And in a few seconds it's going to boot into Windows and ask us to create the administrative account. All right, and so now we're at the settings screen where it's asking us to put in the um, password for our administrative account. Make sure you pick something really secure. You don't want to have it so someone could like log in and mess up all your stuff. That would be the worst case scenario. So after you put in your password, uh, it's going to bring you to the screen and you'll be all set to log in and we'll start setting some stuff up. So it says control alt delete to sign in. Uh, I can't do that or else it'll bring up task manager for me. So I just hit those three buttons and then you put in your administrative password and it's gonna hop to the desktop. Uh, I have this set as a private network so you're not gonna see me connected to the internet with any of these until afterwards. But what we're gonna wanna do is in the virtual machine uh, open up run, put in command, and then ipconfig. Um, and then we're going to want to give ourselves a um, IP address. So that's the one that it's giving us. If I come here, go to Ethernet, Properties, IPv4, we're going to want to set a IP address. So for our use case scenario, I'm going to set it to 192.168.10. Ten, which is usually used for business or big environments um, dot two all right and then for the default gateway you're gonna default it to that so 255 255 255 and then the default gateway I meant the subnet mask last time default gateway uh, 
we're just going to set it as 168.10.1. That should be fine. And then down here, we're also going to set this as 192.168.10.2. And then for the alternate, set it to 8.8.8.8. .8 That's Google's DNS. Then hit OK, close, close, and forget that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into computer. Uh, we're going to right click on it, properties, and then change settings. It automatically detects um, or creates a name for the computer instead of asking you for one. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and change this. I'm going to put VM for virtual machine and then SVR for server and then the number of the server. This is server number one. And then it's going to ask us to restart the server, so we're going to go ahead and restart it now. This will only take a few seconds, and we'll be right back. Alright, so now we can go ahead and sign in again. And now that we're in, we're actually going to add some roles and features to the server that we're going to be configuring uh, later on. So just go to Add Roles and Features, Next, Next next and we're going to add a few things we're going to add active directory domain services add features we're going to add dhcp and dns um, if this was your own personal machine and this wasn't running inside of a virtual machine like on an actual piece of hardware uh, you could also throw in um, hyper v and a few others that we'll learn about later on so then you're just going to hit next 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 all right, restart the destination server automatically if required. Now this is gonna take a minute and after it's done, we will uh, continue. All right, and so now it's all done, we can hit close and uh, then it doesn't require us to restart the server. So all we're gonna do is actually go through some of these and configure them. So the first one we're gonna do is promote the server to a domain controller uh, and we're gonna add a new forest. And so now we're creating our own domain. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to name this jacktastic.net. Uh, you can put literally anything. You don't actually have to own the domain name. So for all you want, you could put google.net or anything you wanted to. So I'm just going to hit next. This will take a few seconds and it's going to join me to the domain after we run through the rest of these um, configuration items. And so you can go ahead and just leave this the way it is, um, just like this. And in a second, this should allow us to actually put in the password there. And so for ease of use, I'm just going to go ahead and put in the same password I put earlier. However, in a real world scenario, you're going to want to use different passwords for everything. That way, if someone gets one password, they're not going to have access to everything on the network. Alright, and then it's just going to give us this little error. That's fine. You hit next. And then it's going to automatically generate a NetBIOS domain name. Um, a lot of older servers and even some newer servers use this different type of um, way to operate called NetBIOS. Uh, it'll automatically generate it. It's just the name without the uh, ending in all caps. So it's Jacktastic. And then I believe we should just be able to hit next through the rest of this. Next, next. Take a second. It's just going through and checking to make sure that everything is cool with the server before it tries to actually make it do anything. All right, and so it gives off all these things, but it says all pre uh, prerequisites checked pass successfully click uh, click install to begin installation so I'm just gonna click install and now this will take a few minutes and uh, once that's all done I believe it's gonna ask us to actually restart the server 
And now it's almost done, and in a second we should be all set. All right, all set. Uh, it's gonna automatically sign us off. We hit close, and it should restart the computer in just a moment. If not, I'll do. I'll go ahead and do it. So just restart it, and then we'll be all set. And so now it's back at the login screen. Uh, so I can just go ahead and sign in once again, and then we're gonna set up the rest of our um, things and we're going to change a few settings. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to change some group policies and then we're going to create a few user accounts and then we're going to go ahead and install Windows 10 onto a different virtual machine in the next video. So let's go to group policy management, uh, come down this little ladder and then hit edit. Uh, make sure to after you're done hit enforced. So once you're in here you're going to go to policies, Windows settings, security, account policies, password policy, and then set it to what I have here. That way uh, they don't need to have a complex password in order to create their password. I put it to a minimum character limit, uh, or a minimum characters uh, of four, and they can change it immediately, and they have to change it after one year. Um, and so that's all set. Make sure to hit enforced. And then we're going to come over to Active Directory and um, Users and Computers. You're going to come down this ladder into Users and create a new user. Mine's going to be Jack. And then the username uh, for them to log on um, is going to be Jack G. And then the password can be whatever you want it to be, a minimum of four characters or however many you put. I'm just going to make it um, one, two, three, four and then they have to change the password at next startup. So now you see that there. I'm also gonna create another user, um, which will be my brother's account, which he's never actually gonna use because this isn't gonna be actually part of our domain. So he's gonna be Daniel G. And then his default password will also be 1234. And then he has to change it at next startup. And so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is if I open up um, the properties for the administrator and I go to uh, members of, you're going to see that the administrator is a member of all these groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add myself to multiple groups. Um, just move this out of the way. Add to group. And I'm going to add because I'm going to be an administrator on this domain, I'm going to be able to want to do everything through my account and not have to sign into an administrative account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add myself to administrative, um, the domain admins, ah, my bad, you have to put semicolon, domain admins, uh, domain, or we're going to skip uh, domain users, enterprise admins, um, group policy, create owners, and then schema admins. And so now we hit OK, and I was added to all those groups. And so now I pretty much have control through my user account over everything that the administrative account would have. And you're going to want to do that with any administrators on your network, or at least have them join whatever parts you want them to. Another thing we're going to go ahead and do is, and this is completely optional, we're going to create a new folder, and this is going to be shared folders. So this is going to be stuff that anyone on the network is going to be able to access. We're going to go to sharing. Uh, you can also do this with a disk, and I'll show you about that in the future. We're going to go to advanced sharing, share this folder, um, permissions, and then if we want everyone to be able to read and write, which for most things you might want people to, you can uh, just add full control for everyone. If not, uh, for individual users, so for me, I can have full read and write, but for Daniel, we can go ahead and make it so he only has read permissions. Uh, and we'll just do that. And so this goes on a hierarchy structure. So if everyone is able to read and write, um, 
and he's only able to read, he's still going to be limited by his ability to read. Uh, and then we're just going to hit apply. Uh, you can also set the number of simultaneous users. So if you only want 50 users to be able to access the share at a time, you can go ahead and do that as well. And so now this folder uh, will actually show up on the network. Hey guys, I guess my camera stopped recording towards the end of that video and I didn't notice it. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like down below. If you didn't like it, drop a dislike. And if you really did, tell me why in a comment and tell me what you'd like to see in a future video. Until next time, peace out.